Frozen because that was predestination, but frozen that when you clap, it's kind of like, <laughs> like this. So I, anyway, I'll do the best I can to keep you awake. Um, we are going to be studying this morning Matthew 7, 7 through 11. And I'm going to take you through it in more of the style. I, as a Sunday school teacher, we'll be reading a lot of scripture this morning. Um, I would like you to start with turning in your pew Bibles to page 812. And with me, let's look at Matthew 7, 7 through 11. So before we start, let's pray. Dear Father, I just ask that you would move the Holy Spirit mightily in the church today. I ask that you would be with us, encourage us, and everything that we do would glorify you. Please use me as a vehicle to, to stand on the word and spread the word, and we know your promise is it doesn't come back void, so please let me today speak to everyone in this congregation with something that's useful for them. I'd also pray today for Kendall Van Dyken's mom, Annika McCauley, who has been diagnosed with a brain tumor. Lord, we ask for your healing touch, your comfort uh, to be with her, and that whatever happens, it would glorify you. But Lord, I most ask that you would just be with us here today. I ask this in Jesus' name, amen. So let's look at Matthew 7, 7 through 11. Ask, and it will be given to you. Seek, and you will find. Knock, and the door will be opened to you. For everyone who receives, the one who seeks finds, and the one who knocks, the door will be opened. Which of you, if your son asks for bread, will give him a stone? Or if he asks for a fish, will give him a snake? If you then, though you are evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more your Father in heaven will give good gifts to those who ask him. These verses we're talking about are about persistence in prayer. Today we learn about Jesus' thoughts on persistence, and we're also going to investigate what we should be praying for and what are those good gifts that God gives? And I must start, sorry, as the teacher, but I'm going to sidetrack for a minute because I want to share with you something I learned along the way. There's a similar verse in Revelation 3.20 that was a little mixed up in my head, and it reads, Here I am, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come in and eat with that person, and they with me. Well, here's these two knocking verses. The one we're studying today is about us knocking. It's about perseverance in prayer. The second one from Revelation, if you look at it carefully, is about Jesus knocking. So here's this door with Jesus on one side and us on the other. So Revelation is about Jesus wanting the unbeliever to come to him. Today, these verses are about prayer. So it's football season, right? And uh, whether you're a Buffalo fan, or you're a Grizz, or a Bobcat, or maybe you're just a, a Townsend fan, it's the time of year that uh, all the football players are practicing. You ever wonder how those athletes get good? Well, they're persistent in practicing to improve their muscles and their skills. So I'll ask you, do you have any Christian friends that you wonder how they got such a deep faith? I know, there's, I know there's men and women I look at that it's, man, those guys are people I'd like to emulate. How did they get like that? Well, I suspect they regularly strengthen their faith muscles by being in prayer, studying the Word, and being active in their church life. So, let's start improving our faith muscles by looking at the imperatives from this morning's lesson. We'll look at verse 7 and 8 first. And remember, this is Jesus addressing our prayer life. Ask and it will be given to you. Seek and you'll find. Knock and the door will be opened to you. 
For anyone who receives, for anyone who asks receives, the one who seeks finds, and the one who knocks, the door will be opened. Jesus is talking about a continuous action here. And note the progression of the action. Asking is just the start of the inquiry. And I think that's probably pretty typical of the way we all pray. We're all asking for something. Seeking, though, is a step up. As we go about finding what we've asked for in prayer, and if you don't think seeking is a step up, have any of you ever lost your keys and were seeking them? And how did you feel when you were looking for those keys? Is it a step up? Sure it is. And then knocking, uh, that shows us the perseverance Jesus had in mind. And I don't think he was talking about when the UPS man drops off a box and taps on your door and runs away. I think he's talking about your neighbor's house is on fire and you went over to knock on his door and see if he was there to get him out of the house. It's a different kind of knocking we're asked to do in prayer. So let's look at a couple other examples Jesus gave us regarding perseverance. I'm going to read to you two stories. The first one is from Luke 11, 5 through 8. Then Jesus said to them, Suppose you have a friend, and you go to him at midnight and say, Friend, loan me three loaves of bread. A friend of mine has come on a journey to me, and I have no food to offer him. And suppose the one inside answers, Don't bother me. The door is already locked, and my children and I are in bed. I can't get up to give you anything. Jesus says, I tell you, even though he will not get up to give you the bread because of your friendship, yet because of your shameless audacity, he will surely get up and give you as much as you need. In other words, that neighbor that came over at midnight, just because your friends didn't do it, but he was there at midnight knocking on that door. Another example of perseverance. Then Jesus told his disciples a parable to show them how they should always pray and not give up. By the way, this is Luke 18, 1 through 8. He said, In a certain town there was a judge who neither feared God nor cared about what people thought. And there was a widow in that town who kept coming to him with a plea, Grant me justice against my adversary. For some time he refused, but finally he said to himself, even though I don't fear God or care what people think, yet because this widow keeps bothering me, I will see that she gets justice, so that she won't eventually come and attack me. And the Lord said, Listen to what the unjust judge says. And will not God bring about justice for his chosen ones who cry out to him day and night? Will he keep putting them off? I tell you, he will see they get justice and quickly. Those two stories are about perseverance, and that's about perseverance for us in our prayer life. So Jesus is suggesting to us that we need to have persistence to keep at it, to stick to it, and to strengthen those Christian muscles. And now those imperatives we just read also came with promises. Let's look at them. Ask, and it will be given to you. Seek, and you will find. Knock, and the door will be open to you. For everyone who asks receives, the one who seeks finds, and to the one who knocks, the door will be opened. So let me ask you, after hearing that, has God answered all of your prayers? I suspect not in the way that we've asked for them. And let me give you two lottery stories. First, mine. I can recall trying to strike a bargain with God. God, please let me win the lottery and I'll reverse tithe. I'll give you 90% and only keep 
I didn't win the lottery. And it's funny because I shared that story with John Carlton, who's not here today, but he had a lottery story too. He, he can recall praying to win the lottery, and God actually responded to him in a loud voice, it will ruin you. Now, I don't know what God's voice sounds like, but that was God telling John, that's not a prayer I'm going to answer for you. So let's take a look at our motives about how we pray. First, from James 4, 2, and 3. Speaking to us, really, here. You desire and do not have, so you murder. You covet and cannot obtain, so you fight and quarrel. You do not have because you do not ask, and you ask and do not receive because you wrongly, you ask wrongly, and you spend it on your passions. Do we ask for things that are selfish for ourselves? Or do we ask for kingdom type things? So what does the scripture have to say about successful prayer? John 15, 7 and 8. If you abide in me, and my words abide in you, ask whatever you wish, and it will be done for you. By this my Father is glorified, that you bear much fruit, and so prove to be my disciples. And another similar verse, John 15, 15 and 16. No longer do I call you servants, for the servant does not know what his master is doing. But I have called you friends, for all that I have heard from my Father I have made known to you. You did not choose me, but I chose you and appointed you that you should go and bear fruit, and that your fruit should abide, so that whatever you ask the Father in my name, he will give it to you. Do you see a trend in those last two verses? We're being asked to abide in Jesus. He wants us to pray for things that glorify the Father and that help us to bear fruit for the kingdom. When we pray, are we asking for something that glorifies the Father? A couple more verses about how to pray. James 1, 5 through 8. If any of you lacks wisdom, let him ask God, who gives generously to all without approach, and it will be given to him. But let him ask in faith, with no doubt, for the one who doubts is like a wave of the sea that is driven and tossed by the wind. And then Matthew 21, 22, which is probably familiar to many of us. And whatever you ask in prayer, you will receive if you have faith. So first off, we need to abide in Christ. And secondly, we need to ask with faith. Faith that we are forwarding the kingdom of God. Whatever we're doing is glorifying God. When Pastor Mike stepped down, I prayed often for wisdom and discernment, courage and energy to stay in the Word and to protect Trailhead. As a result, I was completely at peace most of the time. Um, and looking back, I believe that I was fully trusting in Christ to guide me, and He did. He guided this whole church and had His hand on it. So what should we be praying for? Let's examine physical needs in comparison to spiritual needs. From Matthew 6, 31 and 32. Therefore, not, therefore do not be anxious, saying, What shall we eat, or what shall we drink, or what shall we wear? For the Gentiles seek after all these things, and your heavenly Father knows that you will need them all. And from Luke 12, 29 and 31. And do not seek what you are to eat and what you are to drink, nor be worried. For all the nations of the world seek after these things, and your Father knows that you need them. Instead, 
Seek his kingdom, for these things will be added to you. So as we look for things, we're being told to seek the kingdom. What's being told to us is God already knows we need food and we need clothing and we need all those basic necessities. He's also pointing out to us that these everyday things of this world, he knows we need those things, but he wants us praying about the eternal. He wants us praying to expand the kingdom. He wants us to bring glory to God. So when we pray, we don't want to pray to win the lottery. We want to pray to do something that brings glory to God. So I think God's well aware of our physical needs and is going to provide for us. I think he wants us to pray to expand the kingdom. From Philippians 4.19, And my God will supply every need of yours according to his riches and glory in Christ Jesus. And from John 14, 13 and 14, whatever you ask in my name, this I will do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If you ask me anything in my name, I will do it. Now, asking to win the lottery, he didn't do, but I really wasn't trying to glorify God when I asked to win the lottery. So I asked you a couple weeks ago, what does glory mean? It's that awesomeness of God. Uh, we need to acknowledge and expand the awesomeness of God in what we're asking about. When I prayed earlier for healing, I hope that's done to prove the glory of God. So let's go back to the verses in Matthew that we started with. Matthew 7, 9 through 11. It's kind of we head down the home stretch this morning. Which of you, if your son asks for bread, will give him a stone? Or if he asks for fish, will give him a snake? If you then, though you are evil, how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your Father in heaven give good gifts to those who ask him? So what are these good gifts? If we looked at Luke 11, 9 through 13, we'd find almost exactly the same words I just read to you. But verse 13 is a little different, and listen to what's different. If you then, who are evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will the Heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to those who ask Him? We've substituted the Holy Spirit for good gifts. Is the Holy Spirit a good gift? Absolutely. So let's investigate this a little bit. It's those good gifts that are going to help us forward the kingdom through the Holy Spirit. And asking God with our faith and abiding in Christ will bring us the gifts of the Spirit. So several verses I'd like to share with you. First, let's listen to what John had to say in 1 John 3, 21 through 24. Beloved, if our heart does not condemn us, we have confidence before God. And whatever we ask, we receive from Him because we keep his commandments and do what pleases him. And this is his commandment, that we believe in the name of his Son, Jesus Christ, and love one another just as he has commanded us. Whoever keeps his commandments abides in God, and God in him. And by this we know that he abides in us by the Spirit he has given us. And so with the Spirit, what are some of the gifts and fruits of the Spirit? Colossians 1.9 And so from the day we heard, we have not ceased to pray for you, asking that you may be filled with the knowledge of His will and all spiritual wisdom and understanding. Do we want to be filled? Absolutely. And just to remind you about uh, gifts of the Spirit, and the fruit of the Spirit. Let me read you those verses from 1 Corinthians 12, 4 through 11. 
there's different kinds of gifts, but the same Spirit distributes them. There's different kinds of service, but the same Lord. There are different kinds of working, but in all of them and in everyone is the same God at work. Now to each one, the manifestation of the Spirit is given for the common good. To one, there is given through the Spirit a message of wisdom. To another, a message of knowledge by means of the same Spirit. To another, faith by the same Spirit. To others, gifts of healing that by one Spirit. And to another, miraculous powers. To another, prophecy. To another, distinguishing between Spirits. And to another, speaking in different kinds of tongues. And still to another, the interpretation of tongues. All these are the work of one and the same Spirit, and He distributes them to each one, just as He determines. I want to talk about the fruit of the Spirit as well, because I think this is where many of us can see praying the right way, what it might mean to us. So from Galatians 5, 22 and 23, and again, I bet these are familiar verses to you. The fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control, and against such things there is no law. Remember, God wants our prayers to be towards the eternal, towards our sanctifi sanctification, meaning making us more Christ-like. So let me share a, a story I ran across the other day. I was talking to a, a friend, and she has many troubles. It's a young woman that's got life-threatening issues with lupus. She's trying to raise a 13-year-old, so perfect age for rebellion. And she has marital issues on top of all of that. And so she's going to counseling, and this is some good advice that I think sums up the verses that her counselor gave her. He suggested she needed to stop praying the menu. Pray for this and pray for that, and if I could win the lottery, I could make my family, you know, do all those things. Instead, he suggested that she pray for Jesus to walk with her through all her troubles. And the point is, she really needs help to bring the fruits of the Spirit to her life. So in all her troubles, and again, let me read the list of the fruits of the Spirit. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. If Jesus was walking with you, if you, had, you were abiding in Him, and if, if He was up here holding my hand through all this, don't you think that those are gifts that He would give you? And so when we pray, we need to pray to have Him with us for those things. A few more verses. Ephesians 1, 3, and 4. Blessed be the God and the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in Christ with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places, even as He chose us before Him, before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and blameless in Him in love. In Ephesians 3.16, and I think this one's a good place to kind of wrap these up that according to the riches of His glory, He may grant you to be strengthened with power through the Spirit in your inner being. Every one of us wants that power, that strength, all those things in the list. The Spirit will give us that power. There was a young man who applied for a woodcutter's job. And so the boss gave him a try. And man, the boss was impressed. He was skillful and he was fast. But near the end of the first week, the boss pulled him aside and said to him, I'm going to have to let you go. During the week, you got slower and slower. You cut less and less wood. Of course, the young man was shaken. Um, but the seasoned boss, not really wanting to lose 
another employee asked the woodcutter if he had ever sharpened his axe. And of course the young man said, no, I've been way too busy trying to cut wood. The point is, all of us need to sharpen our axe with prayer. We all get too busy, we all get surrounded by things in this world. We need to not forget to sharpen our axe by being persevering in our prayer life, by praying in faith and abiding in Christ. And when we do pray, our motive needs to bring glory to God. Let's pray. Father, each one of us is so distracted by the things of the world. And each one of us has this sinful heart that's selfish and wants things for ourselves. We forget about the eternal. We forget about putting Jesus in the center of our lives. We often lack that faith that Jesus created the entire world. And, and as Pastor Mark says, every spinning atom he is in control of. He knows what's best for us. Lord, just help us. Help us to turn to you. Help us to be stronger and more persistent. Help us to strengthen our Christian muscles. These are all things that we ask in Jesus' name. Amen.